I have introduced cider filtering authorizer to Cassandra as part of CEP 33. Uh, most of us, most of you, probably already aware of this feature during the community discussion. But I will just walk into this feature today. Um, so first, I will explain why we need this feature. So as organizations are onboarding to multiple clouds. Uh, it's possible that Cassandra clusters are running in one environment and being accessed from different environments. And organization security may need to restrict access uh, at cluster or user level. For example, uh, if an organization is running a set of Cassandra clusters on-premise, which are being accessed from AWS or GCP kind of cloud environments. Here I'm just taking AWS and GCP as an example, but uh, the feature is very generic to any region and uh, expo uh, opening the firewall may expose all the clusters out to the external networks uh, but not all the clusters may need may, may not be really accessed from the external networks so we need to strengthen the security in this case another example can be for example one cassandra cluster is being shared by multiple teams while one team may be accessing the cluster from external network the other teams may not be so one, uh, one such example uh, is, for example, uh, super users access from external networks need to be prohibited for enhanced security so that copied or compromised credentials shouldn't be used from external networks. So these are just, an exa these are just examples I'm listing. And uh, tightening the firewall uh, for cluster level access may not be always possible. Because uh, as we, we already know, Cassandra clusters keeps going through automatic expansion and strings, and there is, may not be a fixed IP space associated with any cluster. So it may not be always possible to configure a firewall in the preferred way. So in brief, this is an overview of the capabilities this feature is providing. Uh, we can define a region or a cloud or a cloud account or a VPC, anything that we want as a set of IP ranges that we call as a CIDR group. Uh, and uh, here CIDR group is very virtual, anything that we can define as a set of IP ranges. And then we can limit uh, classes access from certain regions, certain CIDR groups. Also, we can ac uh, limit users access from certain CIDR groups. And this feature works for both possible and MTLS based authentication methods supported by Cassandra. Uh, this diagram depicts the use case I mentioned. So there are a set of Cassandra clusters running on premise and which are being accessed from AWS and GCP kind of cloud environments. Um, but here all Cassandra clusters are exposed out when firewalls are open for some of the clusters to be accessed. So in these cases, this feature can be used uh, to limit the access. I will quick give a quick demo. Probably that will help you to understand better. So here, we can use no tool commands to de define CIDR groups. Here, I'm saying that AWS is from uh, is this IP range. Here, the, in the CIDR, 10.20.0.0 slash 16. Slash 16 means first 16 bits are fixed. Remaining bits can vary from all zeros to all ones. That means here, in this example, I am defining AWS as an IP range 10.20.0.0 to 10.20.255.255. Similarly, I am defining GCP as a set of ciders and also uh, internal. In this case, if you see, internal is a 0 slash 0. That's something like wildcard IP range. I'm saying that Anything which is not as, uh, AWS, which is not DCP, should be taken as an internal. That's because it may not be always possible to define fixed IP range for all CIDR groups, especially for internal data centers, which grown up over the decades, and it may not be having a, uh, a fixed set of IP ranges. Uh, in that case, we can say that anything which is not already defined CIDR group can be taken as this one. So to be able to support these cases, we have implemented algorithm for finding the longest matching CIDR. For example, if the request is coming from an IP, 50 dot something, which doesn't belong to AWS, which doesn't belong to GCP, then it belongs to internal. Uh, not only this one, we are also supporting 
overlapping ciders as well. For example, if AWS and GCP ciders are overlapping, then this algorithm finds the one which is narrower one. Uh, so that way, uh, we organizations need not be worrying about uh, IP migrations, etc., when there are overlapping cider groups as well. Now, once we define CIDR mappings, we can associate CIDR permissions to Cassandra roles. So we modify create role and alter role commands to be able to uh, associate CIDR permissions to the roles. So he, here in this example, I'm saying that AWS user can access only from AWS CIDR group and GCP user can access only from GCP. And uh, here I'm taking a default user which, who doesn't have any CIDR permissions associated. That means that user can access from any CIDR group. Where if there is no CIDR permission associated, they, are, uh, go, they go through the default behavior. They are allowed to access from anywhere. Now in this example, if AWS user is trying to access from an IP starting with 127 something, and that access is rejected saying that you do not have access from this IP. That's because AWS user is allowed to access only from AWS IP, which is starting from 10.20 something. So this is just a short demo. Other than that, uh, we also provided many other options, configurable options as well as part of this feature. Uh, so we support the side of the authorizer supports two modes, monitor mode and enforce mode. In case of monitor mode, uh, unauthorized access, that means uh, users access from unauthorized cider group won't be rejected. Instead, a warning will be logged. So uh, SREs or admins, when they are, when they want to monitor uh, from which regions a cider group, uh, sorry, a cluster is being accessed, they can use this monitor mode. They can also use this mode during transitioning to enforce mode. So they can monitor for a few months from which regions this cluster is being accessed, notify the customers, and then they can move to enforce mode. And uh, enforce mode, as we uh, see, seen in the demo, really enforces the CIDR authorizer. It rejects the unauthorized CIDR access. And there is another configurable uh, option. By default, CIDR filtering is disabled for super users. And uh, we, uh, user can enable it using the configuration option. The, to meet a uh, requirement that we've discussed. For example, super users shouldn't be allowed to access from certain networks, for external networks, for example. To meet those requirements, we, there is a configurable option as well. And uh, please note that even when this feature is, uh, when, even when this option is enabled, CIDR filtering doesn't work for JMX calls. Uh, so, yeah, so we are supporting the CIDR filtering authorizers supporting wildcard IP ranges, overlapping IP ranges, and we have uh, algorithms for finding longest matching CIDR group. And uh, also, if you, if you notice that, we have not introduced any new SQL data type for the CIDR. Instead, we are using the combination of IP and the uh, uh, normal integer for the mask. That way, uh, we don't have, clients don't have to change their version, so we are not breaking the existing clients as well. And that's the reason we provided no tool commands to validate for the valid uh, CIDR value. And as we've seen in the demo, we provided uh, alter and uh, create role commands for associating CIDR permissions to roles. And also, uh, by default, allow all CIDR authorizer is used, which allows access from any CIDR for any user. That means upgrades are not broken, and existing users are also not broken, because the default behavior is not changed for them. And here, these are the no tool commands we developed as part of this feature, that is to uh, update, update CIDR group for uh, creating and updating the CIDR mappings and drop CIDR group for deleting existing one and list CIDR groups for seeing existing ones. And we are also providing metrics. In the metrics, we can see the access count by CIDR group value. For example, how many users try to access valid access from AWS, invalid access from AWS, so on. And we also show latencies as well in this uh, uh, metrics. And uh, these are the benchmarks that uh, for the CIDR access in the Cassandra server. Note that uh, the latency 
added by this feature is only in the authentication path and during the connection establishment while establishing the connection it doesn't impact read and write path and uh, the latency added is approximately 1 microsecond for valid cider access and 0.9 microsecond for invalid cider access And that's all from me. Uh, thank you. And uh, please feel to contribute to Apache Cassandra. These are some of the links. And we are reachable on ASF Slack and Dow community. And other than that, um, Apple is hiring. Feel free to apply on careers page of the Apple, please. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions?